What is up, Glenwood? Welcome to the first ever Where and When in the World is Mr. Cartwright. So Mr. Cartwright will be traveling through time and space to bring you the most relevant math stories of our history. Let me step into our time machine for our first destination. I don't know if that worked or not. Cool, so here we are at the birthplace of mathematics. Welcome to this luscious, beautiful rolling hills where the very first measuring device was invented over 37,000 years ago. Not long after, only 17,000 years, we had our first calendar that was engraved on the leg bone of an animal. This was later followed by the first instances of algebra and geometry, all located in this country. You get bonus points for one, naming the continent, and two, naming the country that I am talking about, the birthplace of mathematics. The first place these events were ever performed on the world was right here. So, Stay tuned after the lesson video for a preview of coming attractions, who won the dunk contest, and you guys have a wonderful week. Take it away, Mr. Cartwright. What is up, Glenwood? I just ran here all the way from that country and continent that was mentioned in the intro. So uh, for bonus points in this class, please tell me where the first evidence of mathematical thinking had ever occurred. Congratulations! You guys have just completed Unit 1. The grades on the test were really good, mostly 3s and 4s. Very proud of you guys. Um, but yes, Unit 1 is done. Done ski. No more. No mas. Never again will we have to go through Unit 1 of 8th grade math. Congratulations, that part of your life is over. Um, but math isn't over. We are on to Unit 2. Woo! But we're going to go over nothing that was covered in Unit 1. Um, actually, there's still going to be relevant information from Unit 1, so it's a good thing you guys were paying attention. Unit 2 has a new kind of transformation uh, that we're going to talk about. So first we have to talk about rigid and non-rigid transformations. Unit 1 was entirely rigid transformations. So if you remember correctly what those rigid transformations were, I'll give you a second to think about it. What were the rigid transformations? Rigid transformations were reflections. Very good. Translations. Excellent. And rotations. 100% Mr. Cartwright, way to go. I got them all right. I'm so proud of myself. You know what I should be? I should be a math teacher. Um, so rigid transformations, what that means is rigid is really strong and sturdy and it doesn't like to move, right? If you're rigid, you're stuck in one place. So rigid makes congruent shapes. And this was a concept we had just started learning about, right? Congruent means same size, same shape. So a rigid transformation makes a congruent shape. And those are reflections, translations, and rotations. A non-rigid transformation makes a similar shape. And remember that we learned a similar shape is something that has the same angles, but not the same size, right? So a similar shape is same angles, but different size. It can be bigger or smaller, and what we're going to use, what we're going to call these bigger and smaller similar things are dilations. And that is the new word of this unit. It is what we are going to be mainly focusing on is a dilation. So what is a dilation? I have my friend Ant-Man to represent what a dilation is for us. And once I do it, you guys will know what a dilation is forever because Ant-Man's power is pretty much dilations, right? Ant-Man can get smaller, right? And that would be a dilation. And Ant-Man can get much, much bigger. 
And that would also be a dilation. Dilation, dilation, original. Great. You can make it as big or as small as you want with a dilation. You will notice I can't make Ant-Man negative though, right? Dilation has to be a factor. And so that gets us into our next word. A scale factor. So if we have Ant-Man and he's normal size, right? Let's assume this is normal size. I can multiply him by what is called a scale factor. So let's say we want to multiply Ant-Man by two. He is going to get twice as big, right? So his head is going to get twice as big. His body is going to get twice as big. His arms, every single part of Ant-Man is going to get twice as big. Our scale factor in this case would be times two, okay? We could also make Ant-Man much smaller, right? Let's make him one fourth of the size. If we divided Ant-Man's head by four, his head would be one quarter of the size. And for this little guy over here, the scale factor would be one fourth. So we've gone over a few new words today and I'd like to review them real fast, right? First, we have rigid transformations, which are reflections, translations, and rotations, and they make congruent shapes. And then we have non-rigid transformations, which are just dilations, and they just make similar shapes, which, is our, which are shapes with the same basic layout, but different sizes, right? Awesome. Our next words were dilations, which is making something bigger, or smaller, right? Bigger, smaller, same thing though, right? Same angles, same shape, same everything else. And the last word that we talked about was the scale factor. So how much bigger are you making an object? How much bigger or smaller are you making a thing? And that is determined by your scale factor. Thank you very much. Mr. Kari now has the correct answers to where math was first discovered and the winner of the Dunn Contest, along with a preview of what's coming up this week. So thank you very much. Take it away, Mr. Carter. Thank you so much for playing, Glenwood. That was Eswatini. Congratulations for anyone who guessed Eswatini on the continent of Africa, formerly Swaziland. The first place mathematics has ever been proven to be done on this planet Earth due to carbon dating. Um, Congratulations to Mr. Cartwright, that's me. I am the winner of the dunk, dunk Contest as voted on by you guys, thank you very much. And finally, preview of coming attractions. So this week we have a celebrity guest on Friday. This person I will be extending a challenge to that we will <laughs> complete in the following week. I am super excited to take on one of the greatest generational talents of our time in a contest that you guys will find out about on Friday. Um, Thursday has another Mr. Cartwright original, and you guys have a wonderful week. Please return to the live classroom.